Hey guys, uh, Happy New Year. I hope you all had a lovely Christmas and a great New Year. I had a lovely Christmas, as you saw by my um, haul video. Um, I didn't have such a great New Year because I was sick. <laughs> um, I'm still recovering, but I'm a lot better than I was, so yay. Um, I pretty much spent like the last few days in bed. Um, watching K-pop videos and catching up with other YouTuber videos because I never seem to have time to be able to to do that. So I've actually it's been actually quite nice, apart from you know feeling rubbish. But one of the reasons why I love K-pop so much is no matter how crappy my life gets or how much I feel bad, it always goes back to K-pop and it always makes me feel good again. And I think that's the thing for all of us. So. That's the power of K-pop, I suppose. <laughs> um, I kind of want to do a bit of a video about my goals for 2016. I also wanted to announce the winners of my giveaway uh, that I did before Christmas. Um, but before I do, I want to just talk to you guys about this. Um, I received this in the, in the post yesterday. Um, if you saw my previous video, you know that I got a Christmas card and a CD from um, Top Min Kwon. Um, however, which I was expecting, so it was fun. I was not expecting this. Um, and this is from Shaol360, who sent me a Christmas card. Yay! Um, thank you so much. I was not expecting him to send me a Christmas card. I feel a little bit bad, but I'm not very good at Christmas cards and stuff. I'm that kind of person that, like, is still writing them on Christmas Eve, so. Um, but yeah, I kind of wanted to show show it to you guys. Um, it's got a little um, smart cookie on the front. I do enjoy a cookie. I think a lot of us watching uh, enjoy cookies. Uh, it's, the envelope is really cool. It's really thick and beautiful. I loved it. Uh, and yes, this is the card. And whilst I um, I didn't want to show you what um, was really on my um, my card for Tottenham Kwan, I don't really know why. I just didn't really feel like I wanted to share it. Um, it's mostly a lot of um, ramblings about Don Wang Shinki, but I do enjoy her ramblings. I do have my own ramblings about Don Wang Shinki. There's no uh, ramblings in here. It's a lovely message, and I kind of wanted to share it with you. Um, there's a couple of things which I'm going to go through in a second. But yes, this is it. So it's even got some little um, things. So, boys and stare. <laughs> and then um, she's got some little stickers. And uh, yeah. I just love it. So I uh, kind of just want to read it out if you don't mind. So it says, Hello Katie, Happy Christmas. I do hope you are happy and well this season. Family too. As the oldest K-pop stands I know, I've been so comforted by your supportive comments and just your presence on YouTube in general. Sometimes it is hard to be a K-pop Ajima <laughs> because the thought is always, am I getting too old for this? But then you upload a video, you start squealing. <laughs> And I feel comforted all over again. Keep doing your thing and I will keep watching. So, uh, look, Christmas cookie. Um, so, <laughs> I kind of wanted to share that with you because sometimes I do feel, hmm, I'm 36. I'm not going to be honest, though. You know, the code to my age is, in my, is the name of my channel. I was born in 1979. I am 36. I'm 37 this year. <laughs> But, you know, I got into K-pop quite late. I haven't even into it since 2011. And um, so it's all kind of been a bit of a delay. I did my fan going back in the, like, 80s and 90s, you know. Um, so I kind of thought I was going to be done with it. But no, I got caught into K-pop and the fan going started all over again, much to the dismay of my husband. So uh, he still loves me, though, so it's fun. Um, so sometimes I do. I look at my K-pop collection and think, man, if I ever, like, decide... I hope I never decide to, to get out of K-pop, but what am I going to do when I see I just feel really like, so your message really gave me a boost, because sometimes I do feel, maybe I am too old for this. And then I watch a video of Jajong, Big Bang, or Bang Tang, or John or whoever, and it's just like, ah. So um, it's kind of reminded me that it doesn't matter how old you are, if you love K-pop, you're cool, and it doesn't matter. And so I think I'm very cool for still loving K-pop. <laughs> um, and I really don't mind being Ajima. So by all means, guys, if you want to call me Ajima, it's fine. <laughs> um, but yeah, I wanted to just say thank you to her. She got some freebies. So I got this. Um, from the postcard. I love. Thank you so much. And then there was this. And I'm just like, what is this? And it basically says, 
don't forget, I don't know if you can see this, who loved you first. And I was like, what is this? What is this? And she basically sent me a couple of very lovely Taylor um, postcards or photo cards. Um, so I'm, I'm very, very thankful. Um, Taylor's kind of like me, was my first K pop love. And um, I might have said that many times before. But I'm saying it again because I think it's valid. Um, thank you for that. That's really lovely. So thank you, Cheryl360. Um, it kind of made me feel really nostalgic for when I got back into K-pop. I mean, I when I got back into K-pop, I got into K-pop, um, which, like I said, was back in 2011, and I was watching a shiny video, uh, Lucifer, and I was just thinking, is that male or female? Who's that in the red trousers? You know, I did generally think it was a girl, which I think is a common um, confusion that most people have, because it's... You know, unless you know him, it's, you kind of think it's pretty impossible to be that pretty and be a boy. But um, from there, I was hooked to Shiny, to Infinite, Super Junior. Super Junior's Mr. Simple was my first comeback. Infinite's Paradise as well. And I spent pretty much all of this. Like I said, I was in, I was in bed watching K-pop. I felt really nostalgic yesterday and I was watching all the old videos I used to watch. And it kind of made me realise that you should never forget your roots. Never forget why you started loving K-pop. If you've been in K-pop for a long time, and there's been a lot of amazing new bands that have made their debut, you shouldn't forget who, who started that session. I will never forget Shiny. Uh, or Super Junior, or Infinite, or Beast, or any of those groups that were there at the beginning before me. Uh, I spent hours and hours watching their videos, and whilst, you know, Big Bang as well, um, I didn't initially like Big Bang. My love for them grew quite quickly, to be honest, once I realised how amazing they were. But groups like EXO, and BAP, and BTS weren't around then. And whilst they may be get groups that I've listened to or love more, more, or a little bit more, I will never forget my roots. Um, I don't think anyone should ever forget the groups that came first. Um, so, you know, it's great right to go back and just have a little check out and make sure they're okay. And Dong Wang Shinki, and Dong Wang Shinki. I shouldn't forget if I mentioned Dong Wang Shinki, she'll kill me. Um, but yeah, so definitely reminded me that I shouldn't forget my roots. I don't really, but I just, you know, it's nice to have a little reminder. I did spend a long time looking at infinite dance practice videos and um, the star dance battles that they used to do and it was back when K-pop wasn't as popular as international as it was now so um, I still love K-pop now I mean we had an amazing year for music last year so 2016 is hopefully going to be an amazing year um, I kind of wanted to just kind of show you my um, 2016 goal list um, I decided that I would kind of do, I've never done this before actually, I kind of, because I'm kind of in a fairly good place, but this is kind of roughly the start, I haven't finished it yet, but um, when it comes to like Big Bang, I'm pretty much done, there's not really that much left, the only thing really that I want to get is Sungry's V World, um, I will never own GD and T.O.P's Play, I don't think unless I get it for a really good price, um, and obviously they're going to be dropping, hopefully, their full made album soon, uh, along with the Japanese version and the DVD of their tour. Still hopeful that they might come to Europe, but who knows. So my goals for Big Bang aren't really going to be that much this year. Just like hopefully if I can just get some V World, I'll be really happy. I kind of, I'm not sure if you guys can see my list, so I'm really sorry. Um, I kind of want to focus on my BTS Japanese collection, their Korean collection is solid. Um, I've just got to work on their um, Japanese collection. Um, so I want to get their Japanese versions and stuff. I've got a couple more singles coming, so I'm really excited about that. And then uh, TVXQ. Um, there's quite a long list there. I'm fairly certain I'm not going to get around to getting all of them. But I would like to get a couple more of their Japanese albums. Tree and With. Um, I need to make sure that I get Humanoids. And then I th think I'll be pretty happy. Um, FT Island and CM Blue, there's always room for a little bit more. I'm kind of hoping to get Jump Up by FT Island this year. Um, so yeah, these ones are sort of, the rest are all kind of like, just ones that I kind of think I want to get. Little things that are missing from my collection. Um, four Minute Ado Back to Come Back um, this month, which I'm very excited about. Along with Winner, oh my god! Uh, which I'm not a big Winner fan, but I'm really excited for Inner Circles. So. 
um, I will obviously try and support them if I can. Um, so there's a few here, but I definitely feel my biggest thing is to just keep up. Um, there's a bit about Infinite and a couple of shiny ones, some Suju that I'm missing. I'm missing a few Sujus and kind of want to get around to getting DE's Beat Goes On because I love that album. A couple more um, Super Junior M. Uh, I haven't got Magic yet. And I still want to get the Super Show 5 DVD because I went to see it in London and I would kind of like to get it. And I still haven't got Vix's LR. So there are a few bits and pieces here that I uh, really want to get. But I think if I can get to the end of the year and I'm caught up with my BTS Japanese collection and a few bits and pieces for Big Bang and Don Mang Shinki, I think I'll be happy. So, yeah. But my main objective this year is to just keep up because there was a few moments during 2015 I had a rough time and um, I, uh, yeah, it was, it was a bit of a struggle. So, <laughs> um, so I just want to make sure that I can keep up. Um, so I would really be interested in to hear what your K-pop goals are for 2016. Um, leave a comment down below. I would also like to end this video by just announcing the winners of my recent giveaway. Um, I forgot to bring the albums down, but um, it was for Lovely's first album and Summer Moon's first album. Um, so the winner for the Lovely's is um, Sang Ho Beck. Sang Ho Beck. And for Sonomo, it's Rudy Farr. Um, congratulations, guys. Um, I really liked your comments. And um, it was quite difficult. There's a lot of people um, wanting the Lovelies rather than the Sonomo. So um, I know that Lovelies is getting really popular. Um, and I do like them, but I don't think I'll be collecting them. So Sang Ho Beck and Rudy Farr, please message me privately with your addresses. And I will send you your CDs um, next week, hopefully. Uh, I don't live anywhere near a post office, so it's not. I can't just pop down tomorrow to post it. So, um, if you can message me, congratulations, congratulations to the rest of you guys. Um, I will obviously do another giveaway at some point. Um, and yeah, um, I'm going to do a few more videos today, which I'm very excited about. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. Till next time, ciao.